I love trail running. I love big mountains, hard science projects. I like challenges. I'm really interested in looking at how the brain is altered by a traumatic event. Someone's in a horrible car accident or when they've come back from war and had something very traumatic happen to them. What happens to the brain? What changes in the brain? And can we develop treatments for diseases such as post-traumatic stress disorder? The ultimate goal would be to come up with some solutions where we can start to approach the treatment of mental illness in a much more targeted and successful way than what we've been doing in the past. My sister is an amazing painter, but she struggled with bipolar disorder growing up. That really motivated me to try and find some answers. So in your work on emotions, what's one thing you've come across that you wish everybody knew? Hmm. That I wish everybody knew? Yeah, that might be useful for people. <laughs> I actually have a super weird experiment that I ran while I was a postdoc at Caltech. Um, and <laughs> so, I don't know, let's see if, how this comes across. It's pretty weird. Um, so I was doing a, a experiment kind of looking at this a model of PTSD and I just thought I thought oh I know I have an idea this was to this is totally an example of like anthropomorphizing stuff I thought I have an idea if I give a bunch of these animals PTSD and then put them back together it'll help mitigate the effects kind of like when you go to a support group for um, you know where everyone else has suffered trauma and you talk about it and it seems to make people seems to result in better outcomes for people and things like that so I took some animals gave them all PTSD and put them back together and the next day when I went in not all of them were even alive they were they viciously attacked each other. It was horrible. Whoa. Their symptoms were even worse than if um, than they were if they just hadn't gone back with other other kind of members of their species that had the trauma. And I was very surprised, and I was like, "Whoa, what is going on here?" And then I decided to run another experiment to follow up on that, where only one of the animals got traumatized, and then I put it back into the cage with its litter mates that had not been traumatized. And that seemed to really alleviate the effects of the trauma. So you could really kind of um, get over the effects of that trauma or reduce those effects of trauma by interacting with and being exposed to, you know, others and being social, but not others who'd had trauma themselves. That gave me the chills. What, what do you think is going on? Is there, um, like, I show aggression because I have PTSD and we, and then the other person shows aggression? It's probably something like that. It's probably, you know, they all had the same kind of trauma. So there's might be an argument that when you, you know, when you're in a group for other survivors of trauma, you have such different experiences that you're able to kind of gain, you know, perspective and um, feel healthy from that interaction. Perhaps if you guys were all at the same, in the same, you know, bad place at the same time, you would associate those people also with the bad place. I'm not sure, but kind of, it kind of did make me think, oh, maybe it makes sense instead of going to like support groups is might, might make more sense to like go, you know, hang out with like your three closest buddies that are like pretty psychologically stable. And that might be actually the better thing for you to do. Um, yeah, that was very surprising and weird. <laughs>